All right, listen. MyBookie.ag. Holiday cash. You need it. I know where to get it. My bookie is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. Believe it or not, the holidays are right around the corner. And while that means plenty of parties, gifts, and spending, it also means there's a lot of football, basketball, college basketball, hockey games you could score big on every single day. Man up and play like the pros on game day. Look, where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. If you want to make money, by betting the games, you got to go to mybookie.ag, the only site that I would recommend. I trust them, but you don't have to trust me, okay? Check them out for yourself. They have odds on every matchup and a mobile site that makes wagering on your smartphone a breeze. A breeze. Join now and mybookie will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use the promo code RAPAPORT, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, to activate the offer. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid at mybookie.ag. Mike, rap. Big fan here, man. I just want to say, I saw the video that you posted yesterday on all your outlets of social media. And I think it's an absolute honor that my book, Relentless, is number four on the Amazon Sports best-selling books. Behind your book, this book has balls. Uh, you know, it, I've been watching you since the beginning, man. You know, I'm 31 now, and, and I've seen a lot of your movies. I've seen The Higher Learnings. I've seen you in Hitch as the best friend. I even seen you in Friends during the whole Friends explosion back in the 90s. I've seen you in Deep Blue Sea. Was the shark real? I don't know. It, it, it seemed real at that time. Um, and then lastly, but not least, I mean, the Sully movie. Yeah. Hey, Sully, can I got a drink named after you. I'm not an impression guy. Don't fact check me. You know, you, you're the, the founder of that, of course. But um, I just want to say it's been unbelievable to even be announced by you. Um, you know, and I got to take a second just to even thank all my fans out there. That my book, Relentless, is at number four behind your book, This Book Has Balls. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to see the support. Um, but in the two Super Bowls I have won, I know we lost to the Giants one year that I was here, which I have a lot of respect for that organization. But uh, in the two that I've won, there was an old saying that uh, we came up with. It was, you got to believe. So I'm just going to sit back and I got to believe that all my fans are going to go out there and buy this book, Relentless, you know, so I just wanted to take a time out and, uh, you know, I wanted to take a, a full and let you know that, hey, man, I saw the video. I'm supporting the book. I got the audio book. It's dope. You're funny as heck. You know, I can't can't swear as much as you. Um, but yeah, bro. Hey, happy Halloween. I know you got two kids out there, right? You got two kids? Have a happy Halloween, bubs. This is a tremendous honor, and I never, ever thought in my life as a sports fan that I would have an actual New England Patriot join me on my home turf in front of the actual screen, the actual TV, the TV screen that I've screamed at and yelled at, taunted, cursed at, had emotional highs and emotional lows rooting against the New England Patriots. Join me in the gloom tomb for an I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast, but I am thrilled. I'm smitten. I have to say, Julian, that you are absolutely, in, in, until it's proven differently, the New England Patriot with the best sense of humor. So this is the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast with, and I said I wasn't going to curse. I'm going to say one curse. Julian fucking Edelman on the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast. I never thought I'd see the day. I've spent years on the ground. You fucking cocksuckers. You're underneath this table, screaming and yelling at that very screen, attacking you. But the fact that you came here, it means the world to me. My mom's freaking out. <laughs> Welcome to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, Julian. Hey, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Like I said, I, I started actually getting involved in watching you and, and your whole thing. 
uh, your whole spiel. <laughs> uh, with the whole Barstool thing. I mean, right. I was a fan of you. I've seen you in movies. Right. And then I started really checking out the podcast. Right. And, and you and what is it, G Moody? G Moody. Uh, last, last name rhymes with duty. Yes. You know? So, you know, I, I started listening to you, and, and it's always good to see you communicate with all the Barstool guys. Big Cat, I think it's great. So, uh, then I started having a little going back and forth banter with you. Yes. And you 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 did good, man. You, you did it. You did it classy. You broke you broke out the Super Bowl rings. Oh, did, were those there? <laughs> were those there? I didn't realize. Were they? Oh no, the Super Bowl the, rings were those there. Those two things were lying. Yeah, they, they were shining right there. They just happened to be like there. I mean, you didn't know that they were there. They just happened to be. <sighs> you know. So did you listen to the background music? I, I may have just got it. I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't hear the background. What did I miss? What, I don't know. Do you maybe know what was little, playing? Maybe a little, maybe a little we, pop that by French Montana. Okay. Ballin, okay. Ballin, Rick Ross verse. Okay. I don't know. We okay. think of everything in the Edelman household, but okay. I think it was just lying there. It just happened to be there. It and just the rings happened around. to be on. Well, you know? I was impressed by uh, uh, your video, and, <laughs> and, and it, it started because we probably more unlikely than uh, than anything that I know I've accomplished. And even your sort of like over accomplishments in the NFL, we're, we're co-authors. We're, we're authors. We're, co-authors. Do, this is just a podcast of this isn't. This should be an NPR podcast. We're two authors, best-selling authors, best-selling. soon to be. No, I think I, we. I, I think we hit the New York bestseller on. We're number six right now in sports books. That's what I'm talking about. Like. I mean, it's like I, Hemingway you're, you're, and Dostoevsky just sitting down, just sharing. It's Michelangelo like, and, and Da Vinci. Just talking about pros. Just just two guys sitting, talking. Did you guys know that Ian, or I mean, fucking Mike, excuse my language. Yeah. Uh, we'll beep it out. Yeah. We're going to beep nah, that you out. Keep it on. Keep All right, it fine. on. Make them wait. My dog's got Picasso, actual Picassos, <laughs> in crazy. his hallways to his elevator. No, I mean, crazy. I walk into this place. Are and he, and I hear him how he talks about, you know, DT over there, you yeah, know, the, yeah, the yeah. POTUS. Yes. Uh, he's kind of lightweight, got no, that no, kind no, of money no. over here. <laughs> we got we got Picasso, we got Picasso prints on the wall. And you know, people have come here actually thinking that there's actual Picassos in the lobby of the, the Upper East Side Gloom Tomb. Um <laughs> but they're not. They're not real Picassos. I I'm not making, you know, uh NFL Patriots Super Bowl champion money. Um but you know, I, I, listen. I'm happy you're here, Julian. So, so, so let me I'm ask you something. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be you, here. You wrote a book. We're we're two authors, okay? We're just two, uh, you know, soon to be New York Times bestselling authors. That's just what it is. How did you wind up writing a book? When did you start writing the book? Uh, so, uh, you know, after after the Super Bowl, you, you it's a whirlwind if you win a Super Bowl now. So, like, and that was that wasn't just a normal Super Bowl. Exactly. You know, and. It's one of those things like you have a busy schedule in the off season, and then because you have all your obligations to to your endorsements or or other like stuff that you have going on in your life, and then you go and win a Super Bowl, and then it's just like there's crazy things thrown at you. And some guy came up to me, he's like, or emailed my agent and said, "Yo, uh, are you interested in doing a book?" and it was Tom Curran, uh -huh. who's a Boston writer. Yep. And I've been in Boston now for nine years. Right. And I know old Tommy. He's the type of guy you could throw a dip in with, talk about his sons, my pop. He's that kind of guy. So there's always, there always a chemistry with him. He's right. Kinda, you know, he's a, he's a blue-collar Boston guy. He's, like, he's probably like how my father would be if he was from Boston. Right. You know, like I that kind of guy. I got you. And so... From right there on, that, that was already appealing and interesting. And then we, we went over what it would be about. And, and you know, I, I, I just chose to, to do it. And I was like thinking, you know, when's, when's the next time you're going to get an opportunity? Um, you know, I'm so blessed and fortunate to be a professional athlete, to get to live out my dream. Right. Um, you know, everyone's got that story. I mean, I was an athlete. You know, hearing your story with the teachers in the back back in the day, where you were like kind of like, you know, you had your your way of going. Right. Uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to go out and write a book and, and kind of show people like, hey, I could write a freaking book, man. Right. You know what I mean? Isn't like, there a part of you that wanted to prove that? Because, yeah. you know, as, as athletes, I mean, there's very few that are looked upon 
as scholars, yeah. you know, and then when, like for me, I'm not an athlete, but it was the same thing because I know people were like, yeah, Rappaport's writing a, you're writing a book? Like, what is it, like a comic book? Like, or, you know, and, and, you know, and it's, and I know you, you probably had the same, like, you're writing a book, you're an athlete, and you're so busy, and just the fact that, oh, wait, Julian Edelman, you're writing a book? Exactly. A hundred percent. So, you know, you, it, it, that came on, and, and it gives me an opportunity that, hey, that I might not get. So, you know, we jumped on it. Uh, we put about, I want to say, 90 hours into this thing. Right. Like, in phone calls, because... I live in Los Angeles in the off season. Right. I train out there. My daughter's out there. Right. So my day was basically from six to seven was like my commute to my training facility. I would call Tom. I'd work out and train at one thirty to two thirty on my way back from training to like go pick up my daughter i'd call him for an hour and i mean we were doing this and then on weekends we'd be able to knock out three or four hours right. i mean it's a lot of work it's a lot of work you know did, did you do your book on tape not yet let me tell you something right now I know. And the thing do it now while you have time because i'm going to tell you something as far as the book writing process as hard as the book was to write and it was it was hard and i had my guy with me mike young and he helped he helped me every, i mean he was with me but the damn book on tape, especially now, I, your book is more like it ebbs and flows. Mine's like a, a total chaos, yelling, screaming, for the most part. It's ranting. But even, even it, with the parts where it's softer, to, to read it and try to put your emotion behind it, I'm going to tell you right now, you should absolutely do it on tape because your fans would love to hear it. Mm -hmm. But it is, it was probably as far as creatively, artistically, whatever you want to call it, the hardest thing I had to do. A hundred... And I was, in a, I was in a tank for three months doing one of your favorite movies, Shark Tank, in freezing cold water, and that didn't come close to getting that damn book on tape. <laughs> now, I don't mean to make sound discouraging to your publishers no, and all 100%. that, but you got to put your book on tape, but I'm just telling you right now. No, no, but a lot of people don't understand with that kind of stuff, like, when you got to sit down, like, that's a sense of almost acting things out when right. you have to read stuff, so that's draining, like, and that's when I see, like, when I have to go do and... and like we're, we just did a bunch of documentary for uh, the trip that Danny and Danny Mandola and myself took to Mexico to promote the games. So right, we, right. We did like a four day doc out right. there, hung out with a bunch of the people of of Mexico City and and toured and went and saw the Black Jaguar, uh, right. White Tiger, all you know, did all the the whole the whole spiel, and you know we had to go and go and do some of the pr uh, production stuff where you go and you have to like do the voiceover, this, that. I mean, and you got to kind of like act it. Like, right, right, right. That's not, you know, it's hard. That's that stuff's hard. Now, do, do you feel, because this that is one of, hard. I don't care what anyone says. No, you got to sit down and read. And you, and you, you got to say it over and over. Like, nah, and you got someone over in the corner. Hey, can I get it a little more, um, you know, can you say it a little more exciting on that one? Like, right. Like, it's, it's, it's. Uh, it's challenging. But you know what's interesting? Because I grew up wanting to be an athlete. Yeah. And. As soon as I started, and then I was like, it, it, as much as I practiced, but when, when I was in like real games, and, and even now if I was in competitive pickup game, like when things would get tight, like when I look back at like, I always felt like a little bit of ner nerves. Yeah. And the first time I ever acted, I, it was like a fish to water. Yeah. So the thing that I love about athletes pro athletes the highest of the high levels like when you guys are doing your thing when you're making that crazy super bowl catch you know when whoever's doing whatever whether it's kobe the the scalabrini the last man on the bench it's like you guys are totally comfortable doing that so when you when you're doing it's probably like a flip because when it i'm is. in front of a camera when i'm talking like it's like probably how you are when you're playing football 100 percent. and and you know over the years of just doing it and and doing it a lot more um and, and producing my own little stupid right. stuff um you get more comfortable but then you also appreciate guys like you know you guys in in the acting world of of the, the, your guys's art of how you guys can go and, and put yourself in a, a mindset and actually just fucking you know go out and do it right and, and like really be that person and like whatever you do the whole method acting right i don't do that yeah yeah but i mean regardless if if you can make someone believe you're someone else it, i mean that's talent and you know, doing all the shit, you kind of, you see it. You So you, you've you done a, a lot of stuff on your page, on YouTube, on social media. You've been one of these people that has embraced it. And it's like, you know, the fans, 
uh, have gotten to see a different side of you, and especially the Patriots. Obviously, everybody sees Gronk do his thing, but that's just sort of his personality. Mm -hmm. He's done commercials and all that stuff, but you've gone out of your way to like, you know, you have your your, your burger stuff, you have uh, shake time. Like, <laughs> do do you do you imagine yourself doing more stuff? Like, when you're done playing, whenever that is, do you like what would be the perfect situation for you to do? Like, what do you imagine? Like if you if, if if I can make dreams come true today, like would you want to be a commentator? Would you like wh what would you want to do? I could see you yeah. in like I could see you being like in films. You know, well that I I do you have just gotta a, relax though. It's yeah. gotta be like catching passes. I, I am interested in in the whole the whole film thing. I mean, I'm, I've dipped in here with a lot of this stuff and and kind of started a production company, Coast Productions. We're you know we're producing we're co-producing that uh, ESPN or. NFL Network films, whatever, uh, to make that documentary. We we just sold a show to FX. Oh, okay. So, uh, Miss, oh, can I can I announce it? Eh, it's gonna be a good uh, good good story, loosely based off of a, a New England Patriot who, uh, you know, like you got your ballers, uh -huh. you know, like which everyone thinks every NFL player is just a straight baller, right? But sixty five to seventy five percent of the league it. Like in my first four years of career, are guys fighting, clawing, scratching to just stick on a team and take my league minimum at three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars? You know, thinking that's a boatload of money. Not spent like going to the local bar, no one knowing who you are, sitting there in the locker room across from the star player, like looking here over here, and I'm going to the talk about going to the Hamptons in his helicopter with his supermodel wife while you're over here talking to your slap dick friend like <laughs> yo bro you want to go to like Waxies and grab a beer and have no one even like know who we are which right. is like kind of sick right now you know like that kind of humor so we that's sell, cool yeah we we got that you know it's all that's all talk still it's a bunch of bull probably wouldn't happen but who knows so you 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 guys bust your ass you work out you travel uh, uh, I know all the dudes I know in the NBA, like they know every single TV show because you spend so much time in hotels. It's different for, for, uh, for football players. It's not as much travel, but I know like films, TV, you're interested in that. If I had to say, what are your top five films? Films. Now they could change. They could interchange. Well, like, you know what? All right. You could say, I'll give you six all and right. it, it could change. You know, there's no gun in your head. There's no judgment. Like, so if you say Six of you, one cherry on top. Your five favorite, one cherry on top. All right. You know what? I, I, I love Christopher Nolan movies. Okay. So I, I'm a huge fan of like the Inception, the okay. Interstellars, and the Prestiges. So I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just going to put Christopher Nolan as All one. All right, fine. That's good. Don't That's, take the whole, the yeah, whole rack with yeah, everything. You know what I mean? He, I, I like him. Not number one, but I got in you. There, Memento, just, Inception, yeah, the Batman film. He's dope. All the Batmans. I mean, those were dope films. Yep. And, you know, I'm younger generation where, you know, that's... You know, you're not that much younger than me, I, but I got you, Julian. You a little younger, A little right? bit younger, but I mean, you're not that much... slash millennial. No, I got you. You're sort right of slash there, millennial, you know, but yeah. I look fantastic, but I get what you're saying. I'm a little... I'm a couple of years older than you. Go ahead. You know, I love those. I also... One of my all-time favorites that I can never turn <laughs> is fucking is White Man Can't Jump. It's classic. Billy Hoyle, Sydney. I mean, there's just so many parallels to that in my like life in sport. Got you. You know, I've always been the only white guy, and right. I always joke around and call myself Billy Hoyle. Right. Like when Revis was on the team, I, I went to like one of the local stores, got the White Man Can't Jump. Uh shirt and i would cross out the names and put like reeve and edels right and like, just because you know that that that's always been a, a fun movie competitive loving movie i love woody harrelson or woody harrelson woody harrelson he's a funny guy he's um, dope you know i love those that movie um another one wait 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 would you say because you know they're talking about remaking that movie now and, a real con a real hustle would be like if it's like a dude like you it's like julian edelman football player white football player, sort of like, you know, underdog football player. I heard Blake Griffin is going to be in it. You and Blake Griffin, I get 10%. I make the deal happen. I'm saying, would you be ready to for like that kind of a part? If you were like, yo, I have a shot at auditioning. All the time worked out. Belichick clears you. Doesn't affect <laughs> your career. Or maybe, you know, they wait a couple years so you retire. Where there's six, seven, eight, nine, however many years you continue playing. Would you be like... Game to even like go for something that big. Like, would you have the balls big enough to even like attempt to like, yo, I'm gonna star in a movie? 
that movie remake of White Man Can't Jump Star, Blake Griffin <laughs> and Julian Edelman. I'm going to direct it. I'm going to make sure you look good. Are you ready for prime time, Julian Edelman? This is hypothetic. Hypo- hypothetically, I'm just saying. And, if, and, and also, I have to say, hypothetically, if no other actor is auditioning, because you got the one thing about acting, auditioning, it's as close to we have that we have to real competition. Yeah, well, that's like the combine, bro. That's the combine. Your combine. You're just a piece of meat in there. They want to. I, I'm fully aware of all. And that. the actors don't like to admit it. They like to think it's art. It's a freaking combine. It's a war in there. Fool, you got. You got it's it's. Best man survives. Whoever yeah. nails that fucking performance right there, yeah, is 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 taking it. You guys probably have better sportsmanship at the NFL Combine than actors have going in for a, a big part. They won't admit it. I've always embraced like, yo, we're in here. I'm getting this goddamn part. I don't care who you are. I'm coming, like, make eye contact with them. I'm looking through them. I'm like, my intimidation. That's how- you got to give them the, like the look. That's what I always do. I, you can look through a man sometimes. And you just give him the look, you know, like. <laughs> you got to. Are, are you about this? Are like, you about this life? Are you about this life? What, I mean, you know. Come on, man. White man can't jump. That, the remake starring <laughs> Julian Edelman and Blake freaking Griffin. Directed by me, Michael Rappaport. That I, I'd, have to, I'd have to audition. Okay, you have to audition. I'd have to audition. I have to. I'll put you on tape. All right, cool. All right, so you, so we got Christopher Nolan movies, White Man Can't Jump. White what man. are your other? What are your three of your other ones? Because it's hard to say. Th- it's, you know, it's, five. It's tough. You, um, you no judgment. You know, I I love. I love the whole the Rocky series. Me too. One through four. Me too. And I even I even give props to the new uh, Creed. That that's a cool storyline, and they got a new one coming out. I heard. Because it just gets you excited, you know. I totally agree. You know what I mean? You said one through four. Now, I want to I wanna have a conversation. I, I'm not even going to lie. I enjoy five, but I won't put my name on no, five. No, no. Put your name on five. And the reason why you should put I, your name Tommy on five. Tommy Gunn. I'm not putting my name on Tommy Gunn. You don't have to put your name on Tommy Gunn's. The but terrible you, mu- uh, the music. But I'm going to tell you what you can put your name on. You tried to go 90s with the hip hop. You know what you music. can put your name on? The flashback with Mickey. Get up, you that, son of a bitch. Yep. Because Mickey loves you. Greasy lightning speed. Speed is what we need. <laughs> we need greasy, fast speed. Come on, Rock. Let's go, Rock. <laughs> I, you know, I did uh, a movie with, with Stallone. Yeah. Uh, Copland. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. That's all I did with him. And it, it would literally, like, let's just say this. Now, what, isn't he not, like, the coolest dude, like, in I'm, person? I'm going to tell you, my experience with him was on the set and then... The film wrapped, and I, I literally haven't seen him yet. So for me, literally, my first movie that I fell in love with was Rocky. Yeah. I have nothing but good things to say about him. On that set, I don't know. I, I literally haven't seen him since. Yeah. On that set, the first movie I ever loved was Rocky. I was six, like oh, f- yeah. fawning. Was- he, he couldn't have been more gracious and more cool with every single Rocky story. I would literally do Rocky lines, and he would do Mickey lines. <laughs> I would do Rocky lines. He would do he would do Paulie lines back. So, as far as I'm concerned, the experience I had with Sylvester Stallone, nothing but fantastic things. Oh, dude! I so I work I work out in L.A. and and sometimes I'll go up to that Unbreakable yep. gym and yep. and Stallone with what's his name, um, Jay Glazer and all those guys. Yeah, uh, Jay Glazer. Can you kick Jay Glazer's ass? Because he thinks he's like stronger than all the people in the NFL. You know. Like, could you outwork him in a workout contest? Like, you're, you're Jay, Jay, Jay actually is pretty good in the weight room now. He's no joke. No but, joke. But he's not NFL status. You're Julian Edelman. I mean, I would out, I'd be able to run him and stuff. Yeah. But like, I mean, he's like a, like a sumo. He's like a, he's like a little wrestler. He's, he's like, like a, a little, little Jewish. He's rocked up, bro. He's rocked up. You know what? And he's got, he's, he knows leverage and you never want to, you never, like my dad always told me, my dad boxed when he was a kid and he goes, never, never fight a fighter. Right. You know what I mean? Cause regardless Th- those guys, they don't have to, they can time you up. You know what I mean? I agree. So, you know, Jay, Jay's, I mean, I'm not saying, let's, well, Jacob, he's all right. Okay, so, so go ahead. So, go upper, unbreakable I, gym. I see Stallone there, and I'm in, like, I mean, you, you watch Rocky at least once a month. It's on every channel. It's on every fuck. There's always a Rocky marathon, is there not? I, you're, I'm right with you. I mean, I mean, you don't have to. You, I'm, I'm literally there, right with you. If number four is on, number I love number three. The I, the Mr. T. Very underrated. Under going back to L. A. Get some soul. Underrated. That's 
with the Apollo's people? And, and, t- and two is very underrated, too. Two, two in my opinion, two? is right behind one. Right behind one. But I, I, I would say I was a huge four, one, three, two guy. Okay. But uh, one being obviously the pinnacle. Well, that was like real good picture and like actually cinema. Isn't that isn't that one supposed to be like it won best picture, didn't it? Yeah, it was like yeah. One's number one. One's pretty. One's pre- pretty. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's the start. But I see him in there, and I'm in awe of him. And and he, like you said, the same exact thing. Took the time out of his day, you know, to shoot the shit and and tell me stories. And, Some rocky stuff. Yeah, you know, just. Oh, you know, when we used to, you know, spar, I mean, we really sparred, you know, I'd get hurt and stuff, you know, how he talks and he's all cool and in, in there doing freaking curls and he's like, dude's like 80 years old doing curls and, 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 uh, and when shoulders. you're watching him, you must think you're in like a montage, so like for, for a Rocky there, film. A hundred percent makes me go harder. Makes me, makes me work out harder. Hey, Rock's there. I got to go. Bro. I love that you love the Rocky movies because your life and your career is so Rocky. A hundred percent. So... The Rockies are up there at Stallone. Like I said, he was an awesome dude. I've met him once, and he was like just class act. Okay. Class act. Got you. What you want to see from like actors when you, you interact with them. Right. You know what I mean? Cool right. dudes. Right, right. Uh, and what else? So what are your other flicks? So other I'm going to guess one. What? Let's hear it. Is Rudy one of yours? <laughs> Because cause you threw me with the Rocky one, because like that would be like if, if you were I watching... I used to watch Rudy in college. You must have. You're like the real life Rudy. Rudy Bro. was a scrub. Like You're like the real dude. You know what? I loved that movie. How could you not? I love that movie. Do you movie. cry when you watch it? I, I, I still get goosebumps. I, I, I do. The, the There's best, like multiple crying parts of Rudy. Best friend dies. Uh, that's terrible. You know, the, the whole grind of him going... Uh, and, and chasing his dream and being the blue collar middle class America guy that works in the mill and or whatever he worked and goes back to school. Not a smart guy has to get into Notre Dame. Right. And Notre Dame, like, you know, whether I'm not Catholic, but it's right. still Notre Dame. Right. You know, right. back in like the early 90s and stuff. Right. Notre Dame still had that stigma. Like, Absolutely. You know, and, and it's a little artificial now, in my opinion, but. Oh, Notre Dame? Yeah. Well, because it's now, now it's, 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 it's not the same. You predict it. Like it's, it's not the same, though. Right. It's manufactured. Manufactured. All but, right. Uh, one more film. Uh, I would have to say. Um, I, 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 well, take your time. I love Casino. Okay. Now, uh, you're not going to get an argument. Love, you see Bob on the wall there. You see yeah. De Niro. I, I'm a huge De Niro no, fan. Would you take He cas- reminds me of my dad. Does he really? Like in that movie. You know, my dad's kind of like that guy, a little bit. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, like my dad's, like, you know, not crazy like that, but he's just, you know, he, it just, he, he De Niro, whenever I look at De Niro in a movie, it reminds me of my pop. That's cool. Just because the guy, he's kind of like, quiet, he's more of the guy that'll sit back, very conservative, like right. the father in Bronx Tale. Right, right, you know, right. Like, that's a real. So that version of yes, De Niro. That version of De Niro. Okay. But even in the casino, it kind of reminds me because yeah, he's you know, got a badass, little, you know, yeah. fucking how he runs his business. Very like, you know, we got to stay clean and like how many blueberries are in the muffin. <laughs> you know, all that kind of like a sense of detail is like how my dad is. So I always liked those. But you said casino over Goodfellas. You know what? I saw casino. When did Casino come out? Casino came out, I think, I think ninety six. We don't fact check at the Iron yeah. Rapport Stereo Podcast. Mid nineties. So I'm I'm 90- I'm pushing. How I'm old pu- are you then? I'm pushing like ten years old. Jesus Christ! So how old are you now? I'm thirty one. Thirty one. Yeah. You're pushing forty right now. I'm like pushing. you're pushing like forty's like right like forty's like you shut your eyes like you wake up you're forty. I'm forty with like yeah. Like that's what's gonna happen. Like you're little, you're thirty one now. Like boom, next thing next thing you know, I'm forty. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, in, in our sport, we don't like to talk about no, that. No, I got it. I got you know? it. But actually, back when I was like 11 years old, my, I, I wasn't growing. Right. And my parents took me to a doctor, and they did all these tests. They go, well, he only has the bones of an I was 14, I was 11 year old. So really, I'm only 29, bro. That's what I tell all the scouts and stuff, too. Okay. Give me a couple more years. I, I, I Listen, <laughs> whatever. Listen, you, you could be 31, man. You're such a savage. You're like straight up like a savage. Like, <laughs> I know a lot of people, my fans are going to be like, you sold out, you told Julian Edelman he was a savage. You're a freaking beast, man. Now, let let me clarify one thing. Because one of the contexts where you've always avoided my patriot wrath, 
is, are you Jewish, Jewish, sort of Jewish? Because whatever you are, I just want to let you know, the Jews, especially on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, we embrace you as our own. Like, we, like since we heard you were sort of Jewish, partial Jewish, like as far as we're concerned, Jewish, Jewish. You've been to Israel, like you're, 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 you're Jewish. There's something in you that's Jewish. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you something. Because I talk to a rabbi every Friday, bro. You're more Jewish than me. I, I didn't do the whole the whole. I haven't talked to a rabbi since my first marriage. I know, but I need. And my, I think that's why I went wrong. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I my grandfather was Jewish. Uh, my grandfather died when my dad was like three. Okay. And my grandfather was an old Navy guy. Served in. World War II. Tough Jew. Tough Jew. Tat, tatted Jew. Tatted Jew. Tatted, tatted tough Jew. World tatted, War. tough World War. I, listen, again, we don't judge. Like hey. Some of these things are myths. We take it. We, we, we take tough Jews any which way we can. You know what? Like, and that was in the 60s, 50s, bro. Right. No, I get it. I get it. A tatted, tough, uh, World War II fighting, yeah. kick-ass Jew. And so, you know, he, he ended up dying real young. My pop grew up in the trailer parks with a Catholic mom, Portuguese, and, and this is all in the book, by the way, too. I go in in-depth story about this, but, you know, my, my grandma, she's Portuguese and Native American and, like, from Oklahoma, has three deaf kids Jesus. in Oklahoma, leaves her husband, ends up going to California, meets my dad's husband because she's a nurse in the uh, hospital for some World War II vets. Yada, yada, yada. We get in there. They end up having my pop. Now, he dies, ends up kind of like, then my grandma kind of had, like, grandma was like a, she had a lot of husbands, you know, so she got down in the, in the, in the 60s. You got know? you. you know, she's one Sexual of those, like, revolution. It was exactly, you know, it's all right. loved Elvis, Elvis everything, yada, yada, yada. Got you. So, you know, she kind of, my pops didn't have supervision growing up. So that kind of, like, and she didn't, they didn't go to church, they didn't do anything. And so he just kind of became a greaser and said he was baptizing beer. Like, that's what he was. He was just, you know, a guy. And this is in California. In California. I got you. You know, growing up in the trailer parks. I got you. Pops went from trailer park to trailer park with grandma. Uh, ended up becoming a certified mechanic at 14. Um, and, you know, Started his business at 21, and he's still in business in California. That like, that's the kind of guy he is. I got and, you. And that's where, you know, having that and, and learning where where did all he learn his his values or something? It was in him or something. You know what I mean? I got you. Just that toughness, like I got that you. savviness, that street smart kind of guy. Uh -huh. Like I didn't grow up like that, but I have it in me because that's how my dad raised me. You I know got what I mean? you. I grew up. My parents were like middle class. My dad, my dad went from the trailer parks to like nice the hill. You know what I right. mean? Right. And and that's just kind of the way he was, but like he he treated me like, you know, like you're an East Side Redwood City boy. Gotcha. You know, and, and that's kind of where he grew up. You know what I mean? And so, getting older, you, you kind of you get you get real interested in where you come from. Right. You know? I hear you. Especially when you don't you don't have any clue. I like hear you. My my dad's got brothers and sisters that he doesn't even know from his dad's. Uh, his father. Right. Because he had another marriage. And he hasn't tracked them down at all? Doesn't want it. My pop's the kind of guy, I just want to watch football, work for my wife and her, my daughter, talk to my son. If I have a cell phone, but it doesn't work, you can call me in two places at home or work. And if I'm not at one, I'm driving from the other to the other. Have you, have you decided to like want to track them down? Because my father, his father had, I honestly, we don't even know. Mm -hmm. it, it was this sort of pushed away. My, my, my grandfather had 11 brothers. Yeah. So that means I have all these uncles, yeah. nieces, and never met them in my entire life. Yeah. And, and we don't know if it's 11 brothers, 10, 12. Like, it was like, don't ask, don't tell. Like, I don't know anything. That's exactly how it is here. You know, and, and you know, my, my dad doesn't, like, he's, he's not that kind of, he's, he's, he's a simple guy. You know what I mean? He's right. old school. Right. You know, you know how the old guys are. I got you. They're like, hey, I, I'm, I got my family. I don't need any more family. I got you. Like, I don't know him. I don't need to know him. If I know him, they might need the money. I got so you. I don't need them. I got you. Know you. I mean, type stuff. I hear you. I hear you. And so that whole thing. And are you going to explore that, though? Or are you leave it have, alone I, out of respect for your father? I've explored it. You have explored oh, it. I've explored it. And Did my, you tell your father? Or you just. You, you, I, I, I'll shoot it with him here and there. Like, I, I find out where our, our, like, his father, you know, where he's from, came from, like, Chicago to from, 
you know, Poland to England after the Holocaust. You right, know, all right, that right. Stuff like you know. So we, I, I like to track all that stuff. Now I I don't fact check here at the uh, Iron Rap Poor Story Podcast, but one thing I was offended by, and I hope you're just as offended by it. Listen, I'm all for respecting history, okay? But okay, in the Jewish Historical Society, okay, you are only ranked as the fourth best Jewish football player ever. We got okay, behind we, Sid Luckman, Benny Friedman. Ron Mix, okay, so you're, you're fourth. Now, I, I, I want to say right now, like, you got a production team, you're a patriot, you got your guys here, he's got his camera, this guy here. We need to get a petition to get that straight. The great Sid Luckman, no disrespect, but he wasn't playing in the era that you're playing in. Like, I mean, I'm looking at Julian Edelman, you're like, what are you like, what are you, 185? All right, I'm, I'm a little light right now. 170? Bro, I'm like, one, I play at like 199. So what are you now? About 192. 192. 192. I'm skinny. You're, you're like a little guy here, man. This is Sid Luckman. God bless him. He's playing in the 50s. I mean, he's playing against, you know, guys that were like went on to be the corn brief kings of Astoria. Like he's playing against guys that I'm sure like, you know, were orthodontists and stuff like that. I'm saying right now, do you are you offended? Because I'm offended and I'm a Giants fan that you're ranked fourth best NFL Jewish football player ever. Come on. You made the freaking Super Bowl catch. it. I caught it. I caught it. Like... You know, I, I you have an ego, man. You you like Rocky. You want to kick ass. I mean, we gotta get some going here, man. Like in the song, bro. You know, you, you can't change it for glory. I'm, <laughs> I'm not for the glory. See, that's what I like. See, you're you're just like you. Are you always positive? No. Like when when are you at your worst? Because when, when you're I, on when, a field, you're like when you said on the field. And I want to get you to answer the question. It's going to be a great story. Hell of a story. It's going to be a hell of a story. And thanks for correcting me because it should be quoted. When you said it's going to be a hell of a story, you know what I said? I said, ha, 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 ha. This fucking guy's crazy. It's going to be a hell of a story. I went and walked my dog. I didn't even rush back for the third quote. It's going to be a hell of a This guy's nuts. But, I mean, you have this, like. It's not, it's not always crazy positive now. It's, it's more, <laughs> I, I'm kind of an asshole. Okay, How? Like, like, what's like your, what's it's going to biggest... be a hell of a fucking story. Like, you know what I mean? Like, f- fuck this. Right. You know, we, we didn't come this far just to come this far. It's just a competitive side of me. You know what I mean? Right. I, I've been on losing. Like, in college, I lost a lot of football games. I've been on that losing side, but I never quit. Right. So, you know, just because, you know, we're the team that's supposed to win, we're not. Screw that. Like, let's go and let's, let's, let's honker it down. Get, get. You better, you better get the ammo, bro, because I'm going down shooting. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was crazy. And then I remember you said it again, I believe, to Belichick or maybe Brady or, or maybe, I don't remember, after the game, but I was like at the rest of the country, we were like shocked and awe. But you say at times you're an asshole, and I get that's not an asshole. That's just like a competitive dog. Mm-hmm. So, but you seem positive. Like you seem yeah, chill. No. But like, what would you say? Like, what puts you, when are you at your worst move aside from like injury, recovery, that kind of thing? Because obviously that's ex- extenuating st- circumstances. But like on a day to day, when you're fully healthy, when are you at your, like your worst? I'm at my worst when I'm like chilling with like, say, the, like my boys that I'm, we're doing, we do business together and all like that. And, you know, you have a long day at work, so I'm, I'm an early bird. So I get, you know, I'm at the facility by 5.15. I live in Boston. I get like a 35-minute commute, so I'm up early. You choose to be there at 5.15, or yeah. you have to be there at no, 5.15? I, I have a, re- a huge routine that I do, you know. I want to hear that after this. So- <laughs> All right, so, you know, and then I'm, I'm home by, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. And then you got to go and handle, you know, you got your other stuff you got to handle off the field. You know all your uh, obligations, and then you got to talk to all your, you know your, your, you got your kids right. stuff. You got you got your family stuff. Got you, you personal know. stuff. So you know when you sit back and you're around some of your your loved ones, actually, that's when you're kind of you, you you know you go to the you go down the street, you grab a sandwich, you're taking two photos right in Boston. You gotta, right, you got to always be on. You know what right. I mean? Right, and then you, sometimes when you go home. You know, and you're around the people you love and you appreciate the most, you can come off as more of an asshole. I got you. You know, because you're just drained. And I got you. You don't have to have something on. I got you. You know what I mean? Is it, is it hard for you? I mean, not hard, because listen, we're all blessed. What, what I do, 
you know, what you, what you guys do, mm. I don't want to make it seem like it's hard, like, oh, I was, you know, on the roof, you know, laying tile all day. But I'm saying, no, yeah. people don't understand this. And again, this isn't hard. But like, when you're so famous or so recognizable, as I imagine you are in Boston, like, let, let's say someone like Jay-Z or DiCaprio. Like, I was, I was, defending, I was defending LeBron the other day. And I, you know, I'm, I'm always hard on LeBron, but I was like, yo, I sometimes think about like friends that I'm uh, like, DiCaprio is a friend of mine, right? Mm -hmm. We're not best friends, but we're friends. Tom Brady, 6'4", mm -hmm. right? DiCaprio, everywhere he goes, whether he's getting a sandwich, whether he's pumping his gas, whether he's checking in at an airport, whether he's literally walking down the street, there's no hiding. None. Now, there's that a blessing guy. to be Leonardo DiCaprio, but there's a sort of like, like, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, Eddie Murphy syndrome, where it's like you you retreat. Dude, by no means am I even in the same stratosphere as anything like that. But in Boston, though. In, Bo in Boston? In terms of, like, the recognizability. I'm not People, talking about the worldwide. You're not Michael yeah, Jackson. No. But, okay. like, I could even. I'm, I'm an average size. Like you said, I'm an average size white guy. I throw right. a hat on, a hoodie. You or, can move around in Boston. I can move around easy in Tommy Boston. Tommy B can't move around no, in Boston. Because also, he's big. He's big. You know, you know it's, it's different. Because I, I imagine, like, LeBron. And again, like, those there's guys, no hiding. No, no hiding for those guys. He, first of all, if you're 6'9 anyway, there's no hiding. And then you're 6'9 LeBron. Like, you're not walking to the store anywhere no. really no. in the world. No. No. All right, because I don't want to keep you all day. Your routine. What is your routine? Because I'm fascinated by this <laughs> with athletes in terms of, like, obviously it's changed now because you're recovering. Yeah. And, and so, so and, part. And is, what, is, what is your routine now? And what is your general workout routine like during this? So my routine now is a little different because I don't, I'm not necessarily in all the meetings um, right now. I will be getting there soon, but right now I'm trying to get you know, everything, I, there's a huge two month period, three month period in this whole process of, of my rehabilitation where, you know, you got to put in a lot of time. So I'm, I'm working on that right now. So, but if I were playing my routine for like the last five years, six years, seven years has been, you know, get to the facility. Um, I wake up at like probably four fifty five. Um, get up, uh, I'll throw a cha in, brush or brush the teeth, throw Gotta a cha. Brush your teeth, man. Listen, yeah. if, I, you know what? The way you said brush your teeth, like, have you forgotten to brush it at times? Because the way you said it, like, most people wouldn't have to. It, well, I'll either brush it there or I like to have my coffee without mint, like, uh, without my. Uh, with the, without the taste. Without the taste. So you'll go raw dog, eat, drink the coffee, then brush your teeth. Well, because I go to the facility and the Got facility you. is basically like. My other home, my locker, yeah, it's all my sick over there. I've been there. Yeah. Well, not even that though. Like we're there. Like I'm there more than I'm at home. You know what I mean? So like but I was at I was I was around page I was around the stadium. Yeah. It's like freaking Disney World for the New England Patriots. It, it, but we they don't see that. We don't see that, bro. Okay. You know, we got all the great Gillette products and you know, Gillette Stadium, all that stuff. So. I got you. Then I go in my car and I can get down to Boston, you know, thirty minutes in the morning, you're reverse no commute. No traffic. We're reverse commute. And at that time, you know, you're beating it. Everyone's coming in. And so that's when I throw a podcast on. Right, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. You know, I am Rapport. Let's always. just say I listen to I am Rapport Stereo Podcast all the time. I, Go I, ahead. I, I do. I listen to it. What is it? Twice Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's usually. What the hell I'm talking. This you is know, impressive, it, man. Well, it's because I got my PMT. I got Monday, Wednesday, Friday. A after after I am Rapport Stereo, they're well, you great. Your Tuesday, Thursday. They're so boom, they, boom. There you, you got go, it. You boom, know? boom. So I'll knock out some potties, and then uh, and then I get to the facility. I, I make my protein smoothie, which. It's the same thing every morning. I go in, I get like four big scoops of kale. I put it in the blender. I put my ice on top of that. I pack the kale down or it won't go. Then I get a scoop of cherries because it's your best anti-inflammatory. Okay. I also get a scoop of raspberries, two scoops of blueberries, a banana. I put almond butter, flax seed, two scoops of okay. flax seed, a, a chia seed, uh, almond milk, and then 40 grams of protein through protein like a whey protein. So then I, you know, I'll slam that. I'll go sit in the hot tub. Before? What? You sit in the hot tub before you work out? You got to. Jesus, I didn't ever heard that. Yeah, I got to. Maybe I, that's where things went wrong for well, me. Yeah, I got, you got to warm up the body. Like, we, hey, you know, when, you do, when you've been doing this a long time, you know, it's all about. A little got, jog. I go for a little jog, then I stretch. Nah, yeah. I got, see, I got to sit, sit in the hot tub. I'll, 
kind of get ready, over, go over like the game plan of what we got going on that week. You got know, you. With the opponent, you have your iPad, so you can you could either watch film, you know, you go through emails or something. So I'll be 10, 15 minutes in there. Then I go in and I do these ball drills. I got the, I got one of the, my equipment guys. So by that time, it's around 5.45. So I do all that in, until about 5.45. And then I get my ball guy. Catching? So I, I, I go through a tennis ball drill. So I get, I get green tennis balls and pink tennis balls along with uh, blue racquetballs and red racquetballs. And I put two balls and I put a ball in each hand and we go to a wall and he'll throw these balls and I'll sit there and I have to catch the red ones with my right, the blue ones with my left. And it's, it's like to kind of warm up my eyes and my mind for the day reaction. Okay. You know? I like that. I and, like that. I then, can use that in my own life. Yeah. And then I'll, we'll do that in all different directions. And then we go and I'll catch regular balls. I'll, I'll go through a hand circuit. With the jug machine? I, have, I don't like jug machines. It's too predictable. So I get a guy with an arm. Too easy. Yeah. Well, it's not easy. It's just it's there every the Right. It's spot. coming at the same spot. Exactly. I got you. Which is still good for strengthening. I got hand, you. I got that, you. Yeah. So I got I my got guy. You. We go through our routine. Till about 6.30. So it's 5.45 to 6.30. At 6.30, I meet up with my body guy, and he goes through my whole lower posterior chain. So he'll go and rub out my calves, my Damn. hammies, my feet, my ankles. Where's this guy? Quads. Why don't you bring him today for the it, podcast? <laughs> I got it, a lot I of problems, the TV man. 12 guys. So it's usually either Alex Guerrero. He's the guy who works on Tom. But these guys are like, they get the knots, they're in there Every, with the, the yeah. things and, and the stuff. With, with active movement, so it kind of warms you up. And I'm not going to move movement. I'm going to lay down and Alex it, could go to town hurt. on me. It hurts. I'm nah. no problem. If I want to tickle, I'll go to another place. If I want a massage, I'm going to get your guy Alex. 100%, whatever. So I do that from to 6.30, 6.30 to about 7.30. Jesus. Then I'll go and eat like a, a little like kind of oatmeal or like some kind of egg and then we have eight o'clock meetings we go into eight o'clock meetings team meeting you know and you got you know you're with the team and then you break up into offense and defense and you break up from uh you know skill position players to your uh, away from the linemen then you have a walk through then you have a little time and then you go to practice i mean it's 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 a it's a work it's a work day bro it, it's it's crazy i wanted to like maybe i thought about maybe coaching or doing something with football until I, I I became a New England Patriot. And you were like, what these guys do and like how much time these guys really put in because we put in a lot of time, right? But the coaches they do too now. They're in there all I'm day sure. long. Like they they they'll sleep there. Now now you you guys obviously have sick coaches. Now I I want to get to the bottom of this. Okay, I'm being I know fair. exactly, Matty P. What's with the? <laughs> you're the best man. Here we go, Matty P. Yo, I got are- Matty P's back, bro. You. <laughs> Hey, you'll like Matty P, bro. That's my I dog. Know lo- I know I love Matty P. Nah. Matt Patricia. He's got hipster. the beard. The he has hipster. a little history. Now, what's with the pencil? The, the, the play sheet's laminated. I want to get to the bottom of it. Notepad. Is it a look? He's got a notepad in his pocket. And they I'm, go in and they'll... I never saw it. He'll, he'll take it out. So, like, he'll take it out when he's over probably by, like, the, the guys. It's like a little, like, literally like this. Like a little Blue's Clues, like... Notepad? Notepad. Then he writes with all the pencil. He'll write with the pencils. Now, I, 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 I'm not saying that you're making this up and defending your, your outstanding I'm defensive coordinator, you. but I will say this, Julian, the pencil is always really sharp. When you write on a pencil, as you're saying on your blue coos thing, the, the, the sharpening goes down. This guy has the pencil there before the game, after the game, during the game, always real sharp. I'm thinking it's a look. We got it. We got an offensive quality control guy that is on top of that pencil 24 7. Fine. That thing needs to be 0.2 millimeters. Got you. Fine. Fine. I'll accept it. I'll accept Bill it. Has a, Bill does the, uh, the pencil too now. I never see him with the pencil. Bill is the king of the pencil. I never. You're just giving me more ammunition, okay? Because now the fact I, I'm going to look for for Bill's pencil, but but Maddie P, you knew that was coming, and, and I, I respect knew. that you had your guys back, and you knew that that was coming at you. I mess with Maddie P, man. You you would actually like Maddie, Maddie P. P's sick. I've you, seen him on the things. He's he's got the he's got a fantastic personality. I like it. I, I'm just like, what's the deal, man? Like, you know, you got the beard. He keeps it sheen. Dude's it's a nice. rocket science, bro. Is he really? Is he, that a made up? No, he was a rocket scientist or something. Yes, full full nerd. All right, fine. I'll, I'll accept it. I mess with him, though. All right, listen, how could you not? He's your guy. You guys are sick, man. All right, I want to I ask you a few more questions, and then I'm going to let you go. Um, 
Because this, this, I think this might be one of the best podcasts ever, period. It's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's a fun podcast. Good chemistry. This might be one of the best ever. Okay. I smell, though. I think I need to get some deodorant. I'll hit you off. <laughs> well, that's compassion. Jesus. First, I let a New England Patriot into my crib, and then I got to give him my one, deodorant. Bro. Smelly. What the hell is End the world? End of the day, been working. Christ, I had to come man. into this Giants household, and I just had to, hey, let me, let me get a stick. I'm, I don't want to go too much into football. The Cam Chancellor hit in the Super Bowl. It looked crazy. You were able to keep your balance. When when now I know, like I assume that you know you guys like when you're retired, you'll you'll talk about different DBs, different cornerbacks, different safeties that you have problem with. Because when I've asked other players while they're playing, they don't like to sort of give that up. But just as far as we we saw that hit, we saw the the the, the fact that you didn't fall. It was such a like dramatic sort of iconic play. Do some of these hits that you take, these falls, like you're jumping, getting hit, spun around, like are those the ones that don't hurt? Like what are the ones that like are the more ouchy? Because you seem to take big hits, but like just the way you take them, they're never clean. But that was one of the more clean ones that I saw you you yeah. take. It, you know, that, I mean, one thing about Cam Chancellor, <laughs> he's, he's like, he's like a polite competitor. Like, I remember the very first play of that game. I wanted to, you know, you, you, you want to go and you got to test the water. So I had to go and block him. I go to give him everything I had. That dude manhandled me like a little rag doll. And, like, I headbutted him. I got, you know, we, we, we kind of went at it. And, and I, I tried to say something. He goes, yo, 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 young buck. Good job, man. It's a good job. And, and after that, I was like, how am I supposed to talk to this mother if he's so damn nice? Like, he's just a polite, good dude out there right. that will rip your head off. Right. You know? Is, uh, he, is he really strong as for, for, yeah, for his well, position? He's, he's, yeah, he's very strong. He's about 235. Two, he's got to be about – he's up there. He's, 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 a he's good, that big for – And he's got long arms. So when you get that leverage strength, when you got, when you got guys that's, – that's the thing with arms like that. They can get up in you, and they when you have to block them because I got to do a lot of that work where I go in and block that down. To grunt safety. work, grunt yeah. work. Well, you know, it's I my... call it grunt work. I have to do it too. Exactly. Complain to me, <laughs> but you Phil know, McConkey. Those guys, I mean, sometimes you get those long arms. You know, those those guys are they're good, and especially if he knows how to use it, and he's all yoked up, and he's a, he's a, just a specimen. But you know, with the hits, the the worst ones I would say are are when you get hit from behind by mm. pursuit. Like all those ones, I knew that hit was coming. I knew the cam one. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm coming late across the middle. You know, 25 yards down the field against a post safety defense. That post safety is going to be there, so you better, you know, you got to honker down and you got to like get prepare for it. And if you watch, I do. Right. So, you know, th there's those, but the ones that really hurt are like when you do them the screens and you cut back. And, and you don't see a guy and you get hit from behind by a big old lineman, mm. like a guy that's probably like 3, 320, 340. And can you feel the force of it? Well, when you get hit by those guys going full speed from behind and like you're stopped, like it's just physics, man. You got a big old dude and he, they fall on you. Those, those guys hurt. That hurts. You know, when you can prepare for a hit, I mean. And when you're running with the ball, that's sort of as prepared as you can be, right? Well, when you're running with the ball, you know... Uh... I've never ran with the ball. <laughs> Julian, I, I played football for about five or six years. I, they gave me the ball twice. And, and all I heard was people going, holy shit, you're so goddamn slow. My coach said that on, on a... On a, on a um, what is it? Not a flea flicker. On a, I came. I was, they put me at wide receiver. It was like a compassion run. Yeah. Like you know, you got to let everybody run the ball once. A wrap around. Not a, what is it called? Uh, reverse. Reverse. Yeah. I did a reverse going to my strong side left, and I remember going, "Holy shit, he's so slow." <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. But you know, when you're running that thing, you're toting that thing, you're taking mental images. So like you're seeing things. It's kind of like in basketball. You know, you, you know where if a guy's here, then there's no one over here. You're gonna you're, you're dishing there. Got you. You know, it's kind of like that. You you kind of know what kind of defense. It's like I got you. The more you're prepared, the faster you can play. And like those little things, when you're really actually studying the game and you're studying the the, the defense, the coverages, you can kind of, you know, you, you add higher percentages of not getting killed. I got you. Because there's always going to be a shot where these, I mean, these are the baddest men in the world. I got you. You know, you're going to get hit. You're going to get licked a couple times. They get paid a lot of money too. Now, that's that's. Really good. Um, I know that one of your favorite players growing up was 
uh, Dion oh, Sanders. Yeah. Who were your other players when, when you were a kid that that you loved? Uh, I was a Bay Area kid, so I loved the Niners. I loved Tom Rathman. Okay, number forty four, fullback. Yep, caught the ball out of the backfield with the Niners, like a full Bill Walsh guy, just hard nose. Uh, I loved I loved Dion. I had I had the Dion shoes. I wouldn't let anyone touch them. Uh. They always had to be super fresh. Like the zebra ones, remember those? Yeah. Um, I used to have his jerseys. I wore the wristbands like him. I wore his number. I just loved. He, he was just neon Dion. You know, when you're a young kid, and he was kind of like that Odell Beckhamish kind of right, guy. Right, 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 right. You know, and like everyone loved him. Right. Uh, you know, he he was just that guy. I loved Doug Flutie when I got to become a quarterback. I got you. Um, he was the undersized. A uh, guy that could run around, make things happen. Run for his life out there. Run for his life. Huge Joe Montana guy. Okay. You know, like my dad was, my dad almost stopped becoming a 49ers fan once they got rid of Joe and, and they put in Steve. Like there's a huge separation of, of 49er fans when that happened. They shut it down. You know what I mean? Well, like there's like some people that were like, there was a lot of people that were heartbroken right. when Steve became the, and he, he earned his stripes. He was great too. Great. I you mean, know? but you know, Joe Montana was like Tom Brady bro, right. back in those days. Right. I do have four Super Bowls, Joe Cool. Right. You know, like let's just go win a game in right. the two minute against the Bengals. Right. Like it's nothing. John Candy's over in the crowd. Right, right, him, right. Like, everyone's heard the story. Right. So I love Joe, um, you know, Bo Jackson, Walter Payton. I loved Walter. Barry Sanders. I mean, I used to try to do his moves when I was in Pop Warner. You know, everyone wanted to run like Barry. Uh, you know, it, it's there's a, there's a countless amount of guys, you know, and, and then the older you get, you respect them even more to see, you know, that those guys could perform like that, but not just for one year. Right. What makes a guy really good and a great God, there's a lot of really good guys out there. Right. Guys that can mess around have one, two, three good seasons. When you right. get guys that are doing it like for decades or like eight to like 15 years. Right. Like Jerry Rice. I love Jerry Rice. He was the GOAT, you know. That's that's um, incredible. That's incredible. That's like the DiCaprios and, and the De Niro. Right. You know what I mean? Those Absolutely. guys that can just. They, Denzel. Denzel. Like these guys are like on a different planet with it. Complete different planet. When when you're not watching, I mean, when you're not playing, and you're at home, you obviously this season, you, you know, unfortunate injury. Who are some of your favorite receivers? This is my last question. I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. That you love to watch. That you're like, I'm gonna watch this guy play. Aside from when your when your own team is playing, like yeah, who, yeah. who are your, who are some of the guys that you really love and respect? I, I think AB is is a stud. You know, he he. He makes tough catches. He can run by you. He can catch and run. He's a smaller. He's he's representing for the smaller guy. Like he's he's tough. He's his route running ability is unreal. He's got run by you speed. Um, he makes he just he he makes these crazy catches all the time, and he's just smooth and he's cool. And I, I remember meeting him for the first time. You know, we, we always play each other. He's just a cool dude. Like, what's up, cool Jewel? Right, That's right, what he right. called me. He called me, what's up, cool Jewel? I go, what's up, bro? You know, like, <laughs> he's a cool ass dude. So I like him. Odell, he's just, he's a freak. He's a freak, right? Yeah, he is. He's got that whole, he's got really good feet. He's got soccer feet. So his route running ability, he can like really chop it up and, 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 like stop and go real well and set guys up and then he can also run by you and then he's got you know the the freakishly big hands and right. he's got unbelievable ball skills like right i'm like that's that's unbelievable what he can do when he does that pregame stuff yep like that that really is good like that's that's insane that's tracking the spin of the ball and bringing it into your hand like that's good stuff he, he's a stud um i i like watching uh I like watching Landry. Okay, from Miami. Yep. He's, he's a tough kind of like, you know, he's a ball like a like a just brawler out there. Right. You know, he he'll run you over, run by you. He'll make a move on you, catch and run guy. Uh, he's fun to watch. Um, you know, there's there's a, there's a bunch of good guys. You know, and, I mean, you got your age like your Julio's and all and of age. them. Big Mike Evans. You know, Mike Evans. You know. They're they're good they're good football. There's a lot of good football players. My last question: Do you you could be totally honest? Because as you you know, I'm a senior fantasy football analyst champion. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm like, I take on all comers. Where, where is your head at with fantasy? Do you like it? Not like it? Can't pay attention to it? Do you have too many smoothies to make and like, you know, hot tubs to get into? Like, where, what is your head on senior fantasy on, on fantasy football? Because you're a fantasy football beast, but I'm sure you probably hear from lunatic fans like myself. I drafted you, and you only had nine points this week, and like, you got bigger fish to fry. So, what do you think on fantasy? You know it. It's a good thing for the league, and right. it's a bad thing for the league because this generation, like when I was a kid, you rooted for one team, right? You know what I mean. You root now. You have people from like uh, New York that are rooting for you. I get it. You know, and and, and the whole like it, it's kind of an individual thing. Like it's it's away from the whole team thing. I get it. So I think it's a double edged sword. I get it. You know, is it annoying to hear people say that? Yeah, but I mean, it's. That's these people are, are who pay my damn my check. Man. I get it. People that support the league. I get it. Are you know I'm all for it. I get it. But you, you know it's it's just different now. The it, the world has changed. It, it's different. The one thing I will say for me, and I think for 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 me, but I think a lot of fantasy football players is growing up. You know, it was like when I was a kid. It was the Steelers, the Jets, the Giants. Yeah. You know, I was a kid. It was like either the the, the Steelers or the Cowboys. And then, you know, then it was like the Giants, Giants, Giants in the 80s, the Lawrence Niners, Taylor. Niners, Niners, Niners. Giants, Niners, Giants. Niners. We got them that the, one time. Yeah, the one, that Jim Burke. Roger Craig fumbled the ball to run the clock out. Come on, Roger! J- Jim Burt has hit Joe Montana. Joe Montana's on the sideline, and their injury report is everything hurts. We won't get into that. Okay, but I'm just saying. But, but So then, of course, there's my Giants, whatever. But the one thing that I – the biggest thing, aside from – uh, you know, just the fun and the thrill of victory and the agony defeat of, of, of fantasy is that it's made me have a complete appreciation for all uh, the players. Yeah, that's the I, thing. I just have like a broader scope of fandom. 100%. And at the end of the day, when the season ends, you're st- I know I am. I'm still emotionally invested in the playoffs, and it's because this guy might have beat me. So that's the thing I think is cool about it. Individually, like it, like I said, it brings a lot to like a lot of guys. Right. Like, I mean... With guys that you never like, it brings fame to them. I got you a little bit. You know what I mean? It brings supporters. It brings this and that, which is it's great. But you know, like no one even watches games anymore. Everyone watches the red zone only. I got you. I you got know? you. So it's kind of bad for the league. I got you. I got you. It's I got good you. and it's. I got you. Double edged. I got you. All right, listen. I'm gonna let you go. First of all, I just want to say this. I'm honored that you came in here. I, I appreciate and respect okay. that you came on my home turf. The entire. Uh, uh, Football league fans want to see you get out there and do your thing because that injury sucks. And you're a mensch. You're a, he's, you're a mensch. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I'm a man, Julian Edelman. Thank you so much. All day. That was dope. <laughs>